risk of more ISIS-K attacks has not gone away. Based on past suicide attacks in the region, intelligence officials reportedly suggested that terrorists were more likely to strike on a Friday. So former UN Ambassador Nancy Soderberg joins us now. You know, Nancy, we heard the president saying to the attackers, we will hunt you down, we will make you pay. He has ordered these strikes against ISIS. But what impact does that really have with ISIS vowing to strike again and really their disregard for life in general? The optics on this are terrible. It just feels very hopeless. The, the whole situation is an absolute tragedy and our heart goes out to those who've lost loved ones, both on the U.S. side our military, the Americans, uh, civilians, and of course the Afghan people. The ISIS um, has been uh, largely contained in uh, Iraq and Syria, but through support from the Pakistani side, some disaffected Taliban, uh, you do have uh, probably a couple thousand in uh, Afghanistan who have been doing hundreds of attacks on civilians, just one off. They don't really tr control a lot of territory. Um, but as hard as it is to believe, these ISIS are worse than the Taliban. So we um, actually have common uh, goals with the Taliban to try and defeat them. But uh, our our number one goal in Afghanistan right now is to get our American uh, colleagues out and those who are working with the NGO community to um, just uh, support those who have been supporting us and get them out. I think it's going to be very difficult to meet any August 31st deadline. Yeah. President Biden wants to make sure that we get out. But this is just a tragedy unfolding in front of our eyes. And there'll be a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking of how did this possibly happen? Yeah, and let me ask you about that deadline because it's approaching and, and he's been heavily criticized for not kind of walking that back a little bit. I mean, you're, to your belief, you don't you don't believe all Americans will be able to get out there by then. And, and what happens if they are still there? Uh, well, the president said yesterday that he would continue to try and find other ways to get them out. but. Um, they will be at risk, quite quite simply. Um, if they can't get out by the time the U.S. evacuates them out, um, we don't know what the Taliban is going to do. They're trying to put a um, lipstick on a pig, really, uh, saying, oh, we're better now, we're going to let women work, we're going to let women go to school. No one believes that. Um, I think there's some uh, factions within the Taliban. I don't think they exactly know how they're going to rule. I don't think they thought this would happen this quickly. All of a sudden, they're in charge. Um, and I... You know, 20 years in Afghanistan, we've made a lot of mistakes. Um, we went in to get Osama bin Laden. That took 11 years. We took our eye off the ball when we invaded Iraq. Um, we had thousands of troops there, thousands of NATO troops, and those men and women who served, families who lost, can be proud of the work that they did in Afghanistan over those years, uh, making sure that we made the lives better for the Taliban, uh, for the Afghan people, keeping the Taliban at bay. Um, but the deal that uh, the U.S. made with the Taliban uh, last year, last spring, um, left the Afghan government on the sidelines. And pulling out quickly, I think, um, has... Uh, collapse the situation much faster than anybody would have thought. And you, you talked about Monday morning quarterbacking. You know, it seems like, and to your point, all this happened so quickly. You have the terrorist groups that were like, whoa, how do we get in there? What do we do? United States scrambling, trying to figure out how to get everybody out. Was there more, was there a more graceful way, a more diplomatic way for this to happen? Uh, yes, I, I do believe that um, there's a lot of other options that we could have pursued. And I, I, I think right now the focus is to get everyone out and we can write books on what went wrong. But I think, look, we still have troops in uh, South Korea. We still have troops in Japan. We still have troops in Germany. A very small contingent um, could possibly have kept the lid on the situation in Afghanistan. Um, but right now, as we watch the events unfold, um, it's important to get out of Afghanistan now and we can figure out where that goes uh, once once our, our American colleagues and uh, partners on the ground are out and safe. And that's the next five days, that's all that matters. And then we'll figure out what went wrong and where we go from here. Right, and and you know, and as we do look forward, even now working with our allies, what message are we sending to them the way that all this is unfolding? Not a good one. <laughs> um, the, this has, uh, I think, look, it's testing the new Biden team. They've, they've not been in office that long. Um, but this is something that President Biden has long felt that we should not have unending wars. His own son's Bo served 
um, in the military. And I think he's very passionate about ending this war. Um, there are other ways to have ended this war where we don't have this total chaos. Um, I'm not in a position this morning to say where this is going. I don't think anyone knows. Right. Um, how we got here is um, certainly my own personal view is that um, there wouldn't have been, um, it's not a tragedy to keep some troops to keep a lid on a, a situation. And um, I think we're particularly worried about the women and girls in Afghanistan. No one believes we'll let them do this. Yeah. So um, nothing, unfortunately, no good news this morning. This is just one big um, tragedy unfolding as we're watching this, just horrified. Yeah. So again, our hearts go out to those who lost folks yesterday and um, uh, praising the, the brave soldiers that are there trying to evacuate the remaining Americans and our uh, friends and allies working with us in the NGO community. Thank you, former UN Ambassador Nancy Soderberg, and definitely thank you for pointing out how appreciative we are for the people who are still there and still working so that this can end. Thank you so They're much. They're putting a lot to save others, so thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.